What's the word, y'all? Let's talk about the MVP race, the content creator safety blanket. Well, you don't have much to talk about. Bring up the MVP race and talk about what has changed. Uh, we will talk about other things like the other games today, but I want to talk about the MVP award because around this time last year, there were really just two different options, right? Um, you had Nikola Jokic, who was having an amazing accounting stat season, advanced stat season, and a great team record. And believe it or not, I know a lot of people forget about this. Around this time, towards the trade deadline slash all-star break, um, LeBron was still in MVP conversations, but other than that, it was just those two dudes in the MVP race. And this year in 2022, if you told me right now who your MVP was, there's like three to four different people that if you said their name, I couldn't call you crazy. You know, it's a little bit different than last year, right? And though, if you were to ask me right now, January 15th at 11.44 p.m., who is my MVP? I would say Giannis Dettacumpo. There are some other players that are climbing up the ladder. Things have been shifting dramatically over the past month. It seems like, or not even seem like, everything pointed to it being Steph Curry's award to lose. And, and bro lost it I'm being honest with you bro this the slump that he had been in the, in the last month has dropped him from a guy that looked like he might run away with it to a guy that might be fourth maybe you know I mean I know we have an entire half of the season left but I'm saying if the if the votes were to be put in right now I don't see Steph Curry as, as top four you know what I'm saying? There are some other people that are climbing up. We've seen some shuffling of the decks. And one of the dudes that is climbing up right now is Joel Embiid. Today's video is brought to you by Price Picks. Hit that link in the description and download the app and use code Kenny because they're matching all deposits up to $100 for new players. Price Picks is adding another level to me watching basketball. You know what I'm saying? I'm picking over and under on my favorite players and trying to figure out if I get things right. So I'm recording this video late at night so the NBA things aren't up, but you can see the variety here. We got the NFL, we got college basketball, we got PGA, we got soccer, we got CSGO, we got League of Legends we got rocket league come on man it, it, it's always just you versus the numbers right so if i was an nfl guy and i wanted to to place an entry mm, jimmy garoppolo at 424.5 now again i haven't watched jimmy garoppolo but if i'm looking at his last five games he's been very very close to that and hit the over four out of five times i might have to add him to my entry and that could legitimately be your method right you go through and you look and see oh my god patrick mahomes has only hit the over one time but it's the playoffs. You got to take a lot of things into consideration, and it's super, super fun. Hit that link in the description, download the Price Picks app, and use code Kenny because they're matching all deposits for new users up to $100. Go ahead and join the thousands of people that have already used code Kenny and send me your wins, man. I'll be looking out for them. According to StatMuse, in the last 30 days, not games, but days, Joel Embiid has averaged 31.8 points per game, a little over 10 rebounds. He's shooting 53% from the field, and he's getting to the free throw line <laughs> 11 times. And the 76ers, a team who on paper aren't very very good are nine and one in their last 10 and they are sitting at the five seat and they have some quality wins in their record i got i got them written down they beat the heat which was tonight they have one win against the nets one win against the warriors and two wins against the bulls there are some of the best teams in the entire league when the 76ers have joel and playing they're 22 and 9 and when he doesn't play they are three and eight Wow, Joel Embiid has been absolutely sensational. And every time I watch Joel Embiid or Jokic or even Carthony Towns, I think about how fortunate we are as NBA fans that we're watching the NBA right now because we have so many three-level scores at the center position. You know what I'm saying? This is not a very normal thing in NBA history to have centers, like elite-level centers, that can score in the paint. They can get it in the mid-range. It can also shoot the three. And, and this has been a close to a career year for Joel Embiid in a lot of those ways. He's shooting 38% from three. On uh, mid-range jump shot, he's shooting 41%. But on long mid-range jump shot, he's shooting 43%. And when it comes to the rim, he's shooting 72% at the rim. And one of the things that we talked about multiple times on this channel is his ability to play make better than any time in his NBA career, right? There's one thing that you, you can say about Joel Embiid when it comes to his development. One of the top things other than his conditioning and his um, staying healthy is the fact that he has improved himself as a playmaker so, so very much. Because on the scouting report, when you look at the 76ers, yeah, Toby can potentially give you 20. He was very good tonight specifically. Or Seth Curry having a career year. You okay with all of that. You don't want Joel Embiid to go crazy. And a lot of teams are bringing double teams very, very early on. And he has been able to find the cutters find the open three-point shooters and just been having such a great season as a playmaker we're seeing him do things that I know he's been doing this for his entire career but more this year than other years where he's grabbing a rebound and he's going like coast to coast on his Jokic thing not saying coast to coast to like a layup but coast to coast and getting the offense ready and getting an assist or getting to his spot and getting the bucket the dribble mid-range pull up for the seven foot guy is ridiculous and it's an amazing shot today specifically against the Miami Heat Omar Yurt7 played amazing defense on Joel B for 
what was 24 minutes, the first half, and then Joel Embiid in that second half decided that he wanted to go overdrive. And then the fourth quarter, the fourth quarters, he has been king. This is from Jackson Frank on Twitter. 25 points on 88.8 true shooting in the second half of Joel Embiid was completely unstoppable offensively and shut down everyone inside the arc defensively. Not, not just inside the arc. He was guarding Jimmy Butler down the stretch and prevented Jimmy Butler from coming back in this game. One of the most dominant halves you'll see from anyone this season. 100%. I watched all of this game. Um... And I was a little bit disappointed in his performance. I was like, oh, they're on the back-to-back. You know, they just had a game against the Celtics that was, that was you know, a dog fight. So, yeah, we'll give him a little pass. Second half, he was like, oh, yeah, I still want to win MVP. Because I remember, like, three seasons ago, Joel Embiid came into, like, a post game or his conference before the season started. He was like, I want to win Defensive Player of the Year, but more importantly, I want to win MVP. And last year, I think it was second in MVP voting once the season ended because, if you remember, LeBron got injured and then that tanked him from being um, in MVP conversations to pretty much no votes whatsoever. Um, he was very close and this season though I don't have him number one if he continues to play at this level he might be really really in conversation for being number one it's absolutely insane the uh, the load that he is carrying with this organization right now um, again, Tobias Harris had a great game today, but he's been relatively inconsistent uh, Seth Curry, I will say this though, Seth Curry has been great my favorite teammate of Joel Embiid in his entire career has been J.J. Reddick. Shout out to the homie. Because the dribble handoff, pick and roll thing that they had going on in those, like, Jimmy Butler, Ben Simmons, that, that team was really talented, right? The dribble handoffs that they had, the connection they had was top tier in the entire league. And no, the Seth Curry and Joel Embiid one ain't at that level. It's pretty close. It's so unfortunate that um, if I ask you, what was the first thing to come to mind when you hear the name Seth Curry? 90% of the people are going to say, Oh, you mean Stephen Curry's brother? If he wasn't Stephen Curry's brother and he was just a dude in the NBA, I think he'd get a lot more buzz and a lot more um, people talking about him because he's having a stellar season. I saw people arguing that he's been the better Curry in, in the, uh, this month. I'm not saying that I'm people, but <laughs> I'm just saying. So before we move on to the next game, let me know what your MVP ladder looks like right now on January 15th, and we will revisit this in a month. All right, let's talk about the other MVP, my number one MVP. That was uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Even though I don't really want to talk about him specifically, other than the fact that this man just had a perfect free throw game of 17 and 17, and they still ended up losing. No Drew Holiday again. When Drew Holiday, Giannis, and, and Chris Middleton play together, they're damn near invincible. I know you're tired of hearing that, but it is true at this point until proven otherwise. But I want to show some love to Pascal Siakam because he has still been on this tear. Some people have been tweeting me, Kenny, what are the likelihood of Pascal Siakam making the All-Star game? Today, he had a, a, a 30, 10, and 10 game. Even though those last couple rebounds were kind of cherry picked, whatever you know, what I'm saying a triple double, triple double. Um, what is his likelihood of getting to the All Star game this season? Not very high because he missed so many games at the beginning of the season. And I think that if you are going to pick an All Star from the Raptors, it is Fred Van Vliet. I don't think that they deserve to have two, but this is a very quality win for them. Let's talk about Anthony Simons because he has been absolutely incredible. I made a tweet today that said that I'm in. It took me a little bit. I know some people had already been talking about him very recently, and um, I'm finally in. You know why? Why? What took me so long? Kenny, you had seen that he was dropping 30 pieces and getting double-doubles with assists. What took you so long to finally jump on the bandwagon? Because I've seen this in history where someone has a couple good games once somebody else is getting injured, and it just doesn't last. Where you're like, oh, don't you remember that time where Blanket Player was incredible and then he fell off? I needed to see a little bit more from Anthony Simons and, and try to figure out what of what he's doing right now is sustainable versus what's not. And I don't think he's doing anything that's unsustainable. Now, he is shooting the three-point at an amazing clip. I don't expect him to be shooting 50% from three the entire season. That's one thing that's going to fall off. But the vision is more more um, developed is the word that I'm thinking of than I even anticipated. And shout out to my guy, Pierre. Uh, my cousin, Pierre, he has a YouTube channel on this, on this platform. I'm going to leave his link in the description. He's doing a huge D-dab in Anthony Simons. I don't think it come out, came out yet but it might come out the day this video is coming out show my boy some love man he's trying to get into the youtube game i think he got like twenty thousand subscribers or so let's try to get his numbers up he's a guy that deep dives he watches films and all of that so if you want x to nose and stuff subscribe to my boy p because he, he be doing that stuff but um he he was talking to me about recently about anthony simons and the development of anthony simons and how his vision and his playmaking has been way more than what i or he even anticipated and that's true. Like, I watched all of this game today. This is the way the um, <laughs> the Watch the Wizards decided to guard Anthony Simons. Started off, pick and roll, Yusuf Nurkic, drop coverage. Anthony Simons got a, got a clip that is crazy. It's crazy fast. He gets it off super fast. Boom. He start hitting, like, three threes, four threes, five threes. And, like, you know what? Let's, let's hedge these things. And then he just start dishing it to Yusuf Nurkic. And they were like, you know what? 
Yusuf Nurkic is getting layup after layup after layup. Let's just prevent the three-point shot again. And guess what Anthony Simons did? Shoot, shoot, shoot. Now, in the second half, they played it even better. And then his playmaker just elevated to a next level. And it, it opens so many more options for the Portland Trailblazers now that they know that they have this just a 22-year-old guard, by the way. He's just 22 years old. 22-year-old guard who's playing out of his mind right now. What does that mean for CJ, Norm Powell, uh, Robert Covington, and all these other dudes that are French players that are completely not untouchable? Oh, yeah, you already know the answer to my, to my question from my perspective. All of those boys can go. Because if I'm starting next season, and you know that Damian Lillard's not going to get traded because they're not going to trade Damian Lillard, my backcourt is Dame and Anthony Simons. And yeah, this season with those two players on the court, it's been one of the worst defenses in the NBA. Sure. That's why I'm trading CJ. I'm trading uh, uh, Norm. I'm trading everything that I can to try to bolster up my defense because I believe that those two players can carry me offensively for in the future. Give me a good role in big. Maybe that is Yusuf Nurkic coming back. I don't really know. Give me a good role in big that sets big body screens, and those two dudes can do the Dame and CJ thing, but now they have the equity to go get some other people that can actually defend. If, even if Anthony Simon's not the real deal, um, the stress that he is on right now is incredible. And it's super fun. So if you're not watching Anthony Simons right now, I highly recommend. Go watch the highlights from last game. Just watch all of his possessions because he was really picking apart the Watch the Wizards defense. The Knicks are rolling, ladies and gentlemen. Don't look now. The New York Knicks, three-game win streak, 7-3 in their last 10, and they are above 500 for the first time in I don't know how long. This is uh, mirroring kind of what happened last season, right, where they start off really slow and then they pick it up. The only difference is they had expectations this season, so them starting off slow was um, was amplified. Um, but I've been really enjoying point RJ Barrett. He's been he's been finding his teammates. He's been super aggressive and he's been great. As much as I want to show love for the Knicks, I got to talk about the Atlanta Hawks because they have lost 10 straight games at home. 10 they are 17 and 25. They were in the conference finals a couple months ago. Trey Young early in the season was like, "Yeah, man. The regular season kind of boring, bro." You not go get to the postseason play like this, my G. And I'm not saying him specifically, but as a team, you're not gonna get to the postseason, this which is exciting if you don't pick it up in a regular season. Ten straight home losses is the craziest thing that can happen to a team that started off, I think, eight and three at home, and they were struggling on the road. And I remember Atlanta Hawks fans talking to me and, and it was like, Kenny, we just lost six in a row on the road on that West Coast road trip. We gonna be straight once we get to the crib. No, it hasn't been. I don't care who your opponent is. There's no reason for any team to lose 10 straight games in front of their home crowd. It's ridiculous. And today, it was no exception. It was ridiculous. And that's from an outside fan looking at I can't imagine what the Atlanta Hawk fan is thinking right now. I hope that Kevin Durant is okay. James Harden had a great game, but I'm really praying that Kevin Durant is cool. Um, I know that they play on, on MLK Day in a couple nights. But more than anything, I just want KD to be cool because that that was that looked like something that could have been bad, hyperextended sprain knee. I don't really know. Maybe more information will be out by the time this video is out. But we're praying for KD because, man, we need KD to be healthy. I did not watch Cavs versus Thunder completely in real time. But I saw that Darius Garland had a career night when it came to assists, and I was like, you know what? I'm here for that. So I watched all of Darius Garland's possessions. And at one point, they were down by like 15, 20 points to the Thunder, and then they just started to turn up. Evan Mobley had a 20-piece, and a lot of that was like spoon-fed from Darius Garland. Bro be zipping the ball everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's got some velocity on the passes, and he threw a lot of oops to to uh, Jared Allen in one of his better games of the season, just trying to bo bolster up that um, resume so he could get an all-star appearance. The Bulls lost to the Celtics. And that marks, I think, the, the Bulls' first three-game losing streak of the season. Now they sit at 27-14. and 14. And you know what? I am not mad at this loss whatsoever. Um, because the last two losses were so atrocious. I made a tweet after or during the Warriors game where they were losing by 100 points. That, like, it's not the fact that they're losing a game. I can be okay with losses. It's basketball. Any any team can win any given night. It's the in, in the way that you lose games. And in the two games against the, uh, the Brooklyn Nets... And against the Warriors, there was little to no effort from the Chicago Bulls. There's no reason to be losing by Ford at any point ever. I don't care who you are. If you have NBA quality players, you should not be losing by 40. 
and on national TV, come on, dog, there was no heart in those two games. Today, even though they did lose, they showed a lot of heart. No Zach Levine, Alex Caruso, Javante Green, um, Lonzo Ball, Derrick Jones Jr., the list goes on and on and on of missing players. And no, I'm not using that as, as an excuse, but I'm using that as a way to show that the Bulls lost a game by two against the Celtics when they were running out a dude named Malcolm Hill. And if you look up Malcolm Hill on, on NBA.com, bro ain't got a picture. You know what I'm saying? Ayo DeSumo was amazing. One of the biggest steals in the draft. And my rook is just playing his heart out out there. Um, Kobe White had played some great defense today. This team played hard. And though we did not get the win, and we might lose again on Monday because Zach won't be back, I'm okay with this kind of loss because they gave it their all. Vooch, bad foul at the end. I can't be mad at you, though, for the overall performance tonight. I can't be mad at you. Yeah, it was a bad foul. I can't be mad at you. I got to show the love to Robert Williams because as a 60% free throw shooter, he knocked down four consecutive clutch free throws to win this game. So shout out to him. Um, And I know some people are expecting me to talk about the Lakers game, but I, listen, listen to how wild this Lakers season is going right now. Um, I saw that LeBron and Jokic were about to go against, go against each other, and I decided, eh, I'd rather not. It's not like some other game took my attention. I just told myself it's not going to be worth it, and it wasn't. I seen a holy Jokic of Bones highly had good games, and I'm sorry, Spurs fans, I didn't watch your win. I saw that it was a close game down the stretch, and y'all pulled away, but I didn't watch that. But I saw LeBron and Nikola Jokic going against each other, and I was like, I don't really feel like watching that. So that that's that has nothing to do with Jokic. It's it's the other team, and I mean, oh my God. Aaron Gordon, 60% from three. Jeff Green, 80% from three. Jokic, 50% from three. Will Barton, 100% from three. Monte Moore is 100% from three. Bones Highland, 60% from three on 10 attempts. Oh, my God. Davon Reed, Devon Reed, 75% from three. He had 23 uh, threes as a team. But Russ did not turn the ball over. I think they're having a Twitter spaces right now um, about <laughs> the Lakers, and I need to tune in because I think – I think that Russell Westwick's brother is in this again. Yeah, I got to tune in, ladies and gentlemen. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like. Thank you so much for watching.